Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to my studio, and welcome from CCWS. And thank you very much to CCWS for inviting me back to give you another demo this month. So thanks, Jerry, and the whole team there. And uh, I'm looking forward to giving you a little bit more fun to play with today, hopefully. So, and welcome to everybody from far and near. It looks like we've got quite a few people from out of town this time. So welcome here. And I hope you enjoy the demo. Here we have right now on the top of my pile here, a little figure of Dante uh, from the Divine Comedy. He was an actor in Italy and one of the streets, and he was very involved with what he was doing. And um, that's enough to say it's important to paint the subject. So that's really what I wanted to start with, was the idea that I start with thinking about what I want to say about the subject. And if it's something simple, then that's fine. It could be about the light, it could be about the mood, it could be about the realism, it could be about the medium, it could be about colors, it could be about any of those things, body language, um, location, memories. But there needs to be a reason why you are painting the subject. And so in my mind, that's more important than anything else. And so the reason is because it made an impact on you at the time, and you hope that by painting it, it would make an impact on somebody else, um, or possibly to bring back a memory. Could be just as simple as, as painting a, a couple on the street, talking to each other in your sketchbook. That's another possibility. And um, this, of course, is a sketchbook uh, image too. Or it could be about a family member. This is my grandson, and this is homeschool right now in COVID time. And so I'm thinking when I do this, I'm thinking about only the subject and what I really want to say about the subject. And everything else around the subject is not as important. So that's the big, big thing that I'm really focusing on when I focus on figures like this. I want to tell you a story about this particular subject, but I don't want you to see all of the other stuff that's in the photograph or in the images that I'm using to make this subject. So I minimize everything. I crop down and I minimize, and that's the very first thing that I do. I take away a lot of the information that's in the subject. And this is my grandson, and I haven't actually painted a portrait of his head like I normally do of people, um, because he's never still, and he's always doing stuff, and so I painted a lot of portraits of him doing things. This is the latest one, where he's at home studying, well, kind of, perhaps, who knows, um, but it was a nice um, image, it was a nice shape, I wanted to talk about the, the what he was doing, where he was doing it, but I didn't want to tell you about the window. I didn't want to tell you about the quilt or the, the cushions or anything else or all of the other extraneous stuff that was there. I wanted just enough support in the background for you to be able to understand the subject. And so that's really one of the big things that I do is I simplify. I take away anything that isn't important. So going on to another subject here, this is another one of him when he was a little younger. Again, this is called Daddy's Jacket because it got a little chilly and he was wearing Daddy's Jacket, which is just a little too big for him. And desperate to find um, little shells and um, goodies on the beach. And so um, that, was, that was when he was just a little younger. Again, everything else is taken away. It's all about the subject. It's all about the fact that they are involved in whatever they're doing. One more of him before we move on. Um, when he came to visit, um, we made, he likes to cook, and we made lemon curd, and he was so involved with this, he got really into this whole idea of making lemon curd, and so uh, I had to, I had to paint that. But you'll notice that I put the background of the kitchen in, but not in any way that would interfere with what he was doing. And so I'm really being very, very selective and about how I determine the backgrounds. So background, skin tones, all of those things are particularly selective um, when it comes to these subjects. So I would say the biggest thing about painting people is not to include too much other stuff and stay with the story. The story is he's busy, he's figured out how to do these lemons and he's working on it and he's got it all together and, and that's what I want to talk about, okay? So really, really important that you don't go too far. 
Here's a little subject that I painted based on a trip um, the year before last to Italy. When I go to Italy, I go to language school and I'm there, try to speak a little Italian. I'm still working on it. And um, in the language school this time, they requested that we make our lunch before we could eat it. And so this is pappadelle, which is a pasta, a very uh, thin, long pasta. And that pasta is made with eggs and flour, and it's extremely difficult to roll out. It took us forever to roll it out thinly enough to be able to slice it and cook it. And um, this was the experience of making lunch before we ate it. And what I was, what I really liked about this, um, the area was dark, the walls were painted dark. There were some um, signs on the walls, there were some other things around, and I've taken away everything except for the light and the movement and the feeling of this subject, okay? As he lifted the pasta out of the pot, you can see the steam rising, and it just shone in the light. And so this was all about making that pasta. It was a memory for me, but it also makes an interesting subject because of the light. So this one is more about the light than anything else, apart from the fact that it was a memory. And um, this is one of the instructors, and he brought in one of his um, relatives to, uh, to cook with us. And so she talked about the subject and how to do this, and, and it was a wonderful experience. So this is why we're painting. We're painting because of all of these different, different possibilities. This is a subject that um, I have interpreted personally. The picture for this subject is a little different from the reality. Let's pull the picture over so you can see where I came from here. And I didn't want to paint the picture the way it was. The picture was um, actually from a distance. I saw it from a distance, so I've, I've cropped in to the photograph and worked with this. But I didn't want to paint this just the way it was. I wanted to paint the feeling of her playing the guitar. And so this is a very personal interpretation of this particular subject. So I've put washes, loose washes, over the figure and over the background initially. And then I added in a little bit of color. And I really focused in mostly on her face and her hands and her feeling of being connected to this particular um, instrument. And I, I felt that that was all I needed to say about this particular subject. I didn't need to go into detail. I didn't need to make it look realistic. So every time I paint, I'm looking for another possibility. I'm looking for how I can interpret. Okay, this is much more of a personal interpretation. Okay, this one is uh, from a little trip to uh, Harmony. And in Harmony, there's a glass blowing studio. And um, it was a lot of fun to go there and to see how this was working. I decided I wanted to paint the glass blower because of the light of the glass and the light of the oven. And just in general, I wanted to capture the scene. And so what I did with this one was to make a pencil drawing. And then I made a line drawing on top with a micron pen. But I used a brown micron pen, not a black one, so it wouldn't be too, too evident. And so this is why this looks just a little bit tighter. And then I painted it. Um, fairly loosely, um, but I wanted to include some of this stuff in the background. I left a lot of it out. The studio was full of all sorts of goodies, and I just put in what I thought was relevant to the subject. And so again, I cropped and I left out a lot of goodies, but I put in what I thought was important to be able to connect the subject with the, with the um, message that he's, that he's, what he's doing here. Very important to, I think, to um, be able to do that and to be able to decide what to put in and what to take out. This is a little subject that was on the, this is going to be my demo today, along with a few other little goodies about mixing colors and skin tones and all of those things. This was a little guy who was sitting on the River Thames, the side of the River Thames one year when I was over there. And I heard him before I saw him, and he was playing the recorder, which is unusual because not too many people play that outside. But it was a very sweet sound, and, and he was totally lost in his, in his um, environment. He couldn't have cared less who was there. He didn't look up to see if anybody was there. He was absolutely 
focused on his music and his playing. And I kind of like the fact that he'd, he'd kitted himself out for being there for a while. He'd got this uh, uh, cushion um, to sit on, and it was actually tied to the fence in the back here just in case um, he had to leave it. And he was very involved. He had a big leather jacket on, and he was going to be there for a while because he'd got um, a couple of layers. He had his pajamas on underneath here, um, underneath his or some sort of thin um, cover under his pants because it's not always that warm when you're sitting for that length of time. And so I wanted to capture his feeling of concentration in this play and in playing the subject. So this was my choice for you today for the um, demonstration uh, because I felt I could do it in the two hour time period. A lot of the other paintings that I showed you took a little longer than two hours. And today I painted a little of the background first on um, the subject so that you would be able to not have to deal with uh, watching me paint lines and all of those things. That's not interesting. Much more interesting to see what happens in the figure. And so this is my uh, study from the subject. Again, it's cropped down. Put this up behind me. It's cropped down from a larger picture, and the uh, River Thames is right behind here. There were boats going along the back here, and I had a much bigger picture, and I cropped it down to the essence of him and what he's doing. And so that's where I'm going today with this. I'm going to paint his essence. So I have a little tonal study here on my tone paper, and he wasn't in the least bit concerned. There were lots of people around, but he was in his own world. And that's what I liked about this particular subject. And so I'm going to move this to one side and keep the subject here so I can see where I'm going with that. So I put in the background or a little bit of the background this morning so that you wouldn't have to uh, watch me paint that. And we can start right away on the figure here. Colors that I'm using um, today um, are quinacridone gold and burnt sienna. Colors that I use for for uh, faces in small figures like this, most of the time I'm going to use burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is a really nice transparent tone, transparent orange tone, and it really works for most face types if you make it thin enough. Okay, that's not too clean. Let's try over here. There we go. That's a little better. Make sure I haven't got too much of the blue in there. So burnt sienna works really well as a skin tone for darker skins with a lot more water for lighter skin tones. And added into a few other um, colors can make skin shadows too. But all burnt siennas are not created equal. And so some of the manufacturers' um, burnt siennas are very, very opaque. And Daniel Smith is one of those. So. I always buy Winsor Newton Burnt Sienna because it's particularly transparent. And because of that, I can use it for light skin tones or dark skin tones. And it's really very natural looking for basic skin tones. Um, if I'm doing a slightly larger portrait for skin tones, I use um, Cadmium Yellow. And oftentimes, if it's for children or a very pale blonde face, I will use cadmium yellow light and um, cadmium red and cadmium red light. OK, so today I'm using cadmium yellow and cadmium red just to show you how to make a basic skin tone for pretty much anybody. And you're going to want to balance it because your skin tone initially needs to be a little more pink than yellow most of the time. So you're going to want to balance how much pink, how much yellow, and how much pink you put in. So this is going to be for a fairly um, strongly colored skin tone. For a paler skin tone, use more water, a bit more water, and that makes that work. So those skin tone colors are pretty, pretty safe to use. The difficulty comes when you're getting into shadows. Okay, so shadow skin tones, I'll show you a little bit later on. But these are the ones that I use to begin with. So I usually put a first wash on the face, and I'll put these on here just a little bit more so I can put some shadows on here later and show you how they work. Put a little bit more of the skin tone on. Um, the shadow colors can vary. You can actually make portraits with just three colors. You could use permanent rose, 
rose sienna, then uh, ultramarine blue, three primaries. You could use that for um, basically any skin tone, any face. So that's another possibility. And let me show you how that would work. So this would be raw sienna. Let's do that on this one. And again, raw sienna is not created equally throughout the manufacturers. So I always use uh, Winsor Newton because it's particularly transparent. So this would be raw sienna. Okay. And this would be permanent rose. These three colors you could use. Permanent rose is so strong, you can see that it overpowers the raw sienna. So you have to overpower the permanent rose and make sure that it doesn't do that and make it lighter when you're working with skin tones. So raw sienna is one possibility. And if we mix those two together, we get a fairly nice, natural looking skin tone. Okay. That's a little pink. We'll put a little bit more raw sienna in it and move it to something a little more orange. Okay, so those are natural skin tones. Now shadows for this one, if you're using a limited palette, would be um, with ultramarine blue. Okay, so that's a limited palette that you could use for any skin tone you like. So you've got choices now of burnt sienna, you've got choices of a limited palette, and I'm going to come back and later and put some um, shadows on these using these same colors and a few extra ones over here. So you can see how that goes. And that should give you some possible of choices for painting your figures. So I'll come back to the skin tones a little bit later. Um, I paint portraits in watercolor and pastel. And so I do use a lot of different colors. And one of my favorite colors to use um, is cerulean blue in faces and skin tones. And so we can look at that a little bit later too, if you would like to. And I'm very happy to answer questions along the way today. And if you have any questions, please type them in. I'll try and get to them as we go. And if not, I'd be very happy to answer them at the end or uh, in the break. We'll take a little break about halfway through so you can see where we're going. OK, so I'm not going to start with the head on this one. I'm going to start by um, putting in the body and um, looking at my subject. I have pants here that he's wearing. They seem to be made with a brown tone and for brown. I use um, I use burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. But in this case, the brown is a little more pink. And so what I'm going to do is make the brown and add a little permanent rose to it. Make it about the right tone. And then we'll add a little permanent rose to it to pink it up a bit. Now, we can test that on another piece of paper here. A little bit pinkish. A tiny bit more blue in it to cool it down just a bit more. And move that pink in just a tiny bit more. There we go. Now we're getting something that's getting closer. And when that dries, of course, it's going to be a little bit lighter. So there's a question there um, about the colors that I use for raw sienna and burnt sienna. Absolutely Winsor Newton because they are very, very transparent. And so the tonal study um, is not done with graphite. No, the tonal study is drawn with a pencil. But then I use white paint and uh, gouache paint and um, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna grays. I'll just go back and look at that if you like. So I'm working on a toned paper. And the reason I'm working on a toned paper for these studies is because most of the paintings that you look at and you see will be overall middle tone. And so the toned paper takes care of the middle tones. And then I add the lights and the darks. And that way I can see my work more as a painting. If I do it on watercolor, I'm struggling in a way to get it as light or as dark as I need it to be. Um, it doesn't, and oftentimes in watercolor, we leave a little white showing, but I like to be able to see it looking more like a painting. And so um, I find that the tonal paper is a good way to go because it makes you think in terms of tone as opposed to color right away. So, okay. So I'm going to start working on just the base tones. Um, and as I go, I'm going to be doing a lot of lifting uh, because when I 
when I paint these subjects, I like to have a little realism in the subject. And I've got just about enough paint here, I think, for this one. And I like to be able to think about the um, think about the shapes of the clothing as I start. And we'll put a few little grayer, cooler shadows on this one. This goes right up into here. So this is almost like a coloring book to start with because I'm working on separate sections of this subject. But I'm going to pull out right away some of the lights to start to indicate some of these um, areas that are just a little bit lighter while it's still damp. And we'll come back to those afterwards. A little bit more in here. Um, question is, do I always sketch this um, in this much detail? It depends on the subject. If I want the subject to look realistic, I'm going to put a lot of time into the sketch. If I don't, I'm not. So it, it depends on what the reason why I'm painting it. So for you, I want to be able to show you some realism. I want to be able to show you some techniques that I'm using. And so um, I'm doing it a little bit more realistically on this one. And because I'm really interested in all of these folds and areas that we, we can establish here. OK, um, the image that I've got printed here is not quite as bright as the image on the photo paper. So um, you're seeing just a little bit more color in my painting because of that. I have one sitting opposite me that's a photo as well. OK, so now we're going to go in with just a little bit more tone. I'm putting in a few of the darker tones to start with just so I can get a feel for how dark and how light everything needs to be. You know, every time you do a painting, it doesn't matter how long you've painted, whether you've painted 30 years or three years or six months, you still have to start from scratch. You might have a little bit of a bigger bag of tricks to be able to work with, but every time you paint, it's going to be new to you. And so you never quite know what's going to happen, particularly with watercolor. I'm just mixing up a little dark tone here as I talk to you with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna again for um, the first wash on this little area here. I really want to put, establish this before I get into um, too much detail at the top. So just a little loose wash in here. We'll take care of that. And so every time I paint, I'm jumping in the deep end just like you are, because I know what should happen, but I don't know what always will happen with watercolor. And so it's it's always a nice challenge to, to be able to play with the idea of watercolor. And I really don't want a too sharp an edge here, so I'm just going to soften that little edge as we go around. Edges are important because they're the way that we read the painting, and so um, I want it to look like a cutout all the way around, so I'm just going to soften that down just a bit. And I'll go down the list and look for your questions in a minute when I've, or in a few minutes when I'm getting just a little further along. I'm also not concerned about leaving little white areas either. I'm use that same color now over here on this space. So I'm just establishing some of the shapes in the subject. And I do spend a lot of time on the drawing. I spent a lot of time on this drawing. I spent a lot of time on the drawing for the glass blower. Um, a little less time on the guitarist um, in a way because I wasn't going to paint it as realistically. So it depends on what you need. I think it's almost better to have too much information than too little, um, because you can always leave it out as you paint it. You don't have to paint everything that's there. But here I want specific shapes, so I'm I'm working on that a little bit. Now I'm going to throw in some, some areas down here. I'm trying to get rid of a lot of this white paper down here before I start to work on the important part. And so that's my reasoning for going in this direction.
Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of a, a cobalt blue. Let me show you what's happening on the palette over here while I'm working. A um, little cobalt blue here and um, a little bit of cerulean in there too, just two. And a tiny touch of burnt sienna to gray it down a bit. There we go. That should work. And we'll go with that for this idea of the, the lightest tones here on the, this area. And just before I go any further, I'm just going to pull out a few of these. Now let's dry it down just a little bit. Just a few of these lines in here. So I can start to get a feeling for some dimension in there too. And drop in a little color in here. I'm not going to paint every single little part of this part of the subject. To me, what's most important is the figure. And this is a support feature for the figure. And so I'm not as interested in putting as much detail in this as I will in the figure. I just have enough to, to make it work here. OK. And I'm going to drop in a little pink in a few places. There's a pattern on there. So we'll just drop in. Oops, it's a little too strong. That permanent rose will get you every time. Just want this to be in the background in a few places just to indicate a suggestion of that idea of pattern. Oh, these blooms are nice. That works well. Okay. So I'm going to focus now a little bit on the feet. And then I'm going to move up to the top part of the body. And before I move up to the body, I'm going to put a wash in the foreground here and um, add a little texture to that by spraying. And then later on, a little more texture to it by um, giving it some spatter. So let's just add a little information to the feet. And this is a similar color. The uh, socks are a similar color to the um, blanket that I just painted. Just a little bit more um, cobalt and a little bit more of a gray tone. Yeah, tiny little bit more color in there. That should do it. And so again, I want just a flat wash for the moment because I'm going to come back in with shadows and just want these to connect. I don't really need the detail of the shoes right now, but I will just put one wash on those as well. Okay. Before that dries, um, I'll just I think I'll leave those for the moment. Add the wash later. So the shoes are just a touch darker. So this is more of the color that's here, um, just a little bit darker. I'm going to drop in a little burnt sienna along the way with these and lift a little bit more too. Lifting is a good way to deal with a lot of things in watercolor. I probably take off as much paint as I put on in some subjects. Let's put a little brown on there. And let's just lift up a little bit of that, that tone at the top there. There's a little brown tone feel in there wear and that will, that will work pretty nicely. Okay, now in the foreground, I need a wash that's going to take care of this large space. So let's move out just a bit so we can see that. I'm going to use some raw sienna, some burnt sienna, and I'm going to make it about a light middle tone to start with. And I'm going to drop in a little blue in a few places. I just want something that resembles a, a speckled ground area like this. Okay, 
something that resembles this. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it needs to have a little texture because nothing else um, next to it has texture. So we'll start with a raw sienna. And that's going to be way too bright. But it's along the lines of the right tone to start with. I'll use a slightly bigger brush here. Make it quicker and easier. So what I'm going to rely on with this one is um, the colour of the tone and the um, amount of paint that I'm putting on, and then the fact that it's almost dry, and I can get a little texture just by spattering and um, a little bit of water on the top. So I'll put some grays on, calm that down a bit, brown in some places. Just want a little variety on that. A bit more grey, I think, just to tone it down a wee bit more. There we go. Now we're looking like something that could be on the street. Now as that dries, if I spritz it with a little water, I'm going to get the first amount of texture and then later on I'll come back and add some more texture to it. And of course if you work as it's drying you're going to get a little more texture too and you might get uh, blooms which would be very useful in a subject like this but they don't always happen where you want them to happen. And that's just beginning to dry now. So I'm going to use just a little spritz bottle here, a water spray bottle. And just give it a second or two. And just test it. And you can see what's happening here. You can see that I'm getting a little texture because I'm spraying on just a small amount of water as it dries. So this is a technique that you have to use just as the paper is drying. It works best just as the paper is drying. See how that's opening up and making texture? And then we'll come back with a little spatter later on. And that should be fine. So those little watercolour techniques are very useful in areas like this. Okay, I think we need to change that um, edge just a touch there. Before I finish, I'm just going to push that edge up a little bit into that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to use my flat brush, my round brush again, to just lift out a little bit of this area here too. Lifting helps with shapes, lifting helps with tone, and for a lot of creases quite often it's a, a useful extra element to, um, to help you to define what's going on there. And the question is, no, I didn't soak my paper. I just, uh, on a si this size, I don't think it's necessary. I just stapled it down so it would stay flat. Anything larger than this, I would definitely soak it first and then staple it down. But this seems to be, quarter sheet size seems to be okay if you don't do that. All right, so we have a lot of stuff happening there now. We can move up and we can get to a similar point in the rest of the painting. That's what I like to do. I don't like to finish one thing off before I go through and get everything because if I do everything to the same sort of finish, then I can stop anywhere. 
if I finish off something in great detail in one part of the painting, then ultimately I have to do that everywhere, even if I don't want to. And so that's my reasoning for trying to keep everything about the same amount of finish before I start working on detail. Okay, so the jacket is a leather jacket and it's a sort of gold color. So for that, I'm going to use a little quinacridone gold and um, burn sienna together. And that should work pretty nicely for that. It's going to be a little brighter than it is in reality, but that's okay. That's probably going to be fine. Once the shadows go in, it'll be a bit darker. We'll test that and see how that's going to look. That's pretty close. A little bit lighter than that, I think, for the first wash. That's more like it. Okay, maybe just a touch more. Knowing it's going to dry lighter, I want it just a touch, touch darker. And I managed to get a little blue in there, so that won't hurt because that will calm it down a bit. Too. Now it's a little too brown. So we'll try again. I have a, a darker color next to my quinacridone gold, and if I'm not careful, I pick up a little of that along the way in this little palette. It's useful for uh, demonstrating, but it has a few limitations there. Okay, that'll work too. That should be fine. And yeah, I think maybe just a touch more gold and a little bit warmer. And now I think we're there. Yeah, that should do it. Okay, so this is going to be my first layer. Now, I'm going to be lifting back some of this area. So rather than put on a light tone and then another middle tone and then um, a dark tone, I'm going to be doing just this one level and then the shadows. So. Now, lift out a few of these spaces. And I want this to look old and worn. And so I'm purposely using strokes. Rather than putting a big flat wash, I'm using separate strokes where I can to give a little bit more texture and movement to this part of the painting. A little bit of this on the other side, going up to its beard. Okay. And I'm going to start to lift out some of these little areas here. Just a little bit more color down here. All those little whites will disappear eventually. This is just a little bit lighter, so I just put my brush on the sponge to lighten it up a bit for this area. And I think that's everything that's going to be that color right now. There's quite a bit of light up here, so we'll pull down a little bit of that light while it's still damp. And that should take care of the beginning of the shaping of that, that part. Okay, so I'm, I'm heading in a direction that I want to go in. The rest of his clothing in here is um, in the shadow. I'm not quite sure what it is, so I will paint a shadow color um, because that's really the only choice I've got if I don't know exactly what color everything is. And so a shadow color could be cobalt blue and burnt sienna, or it could be ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I'm going to use cobalt for this one. I'm going to test it on a piece of paper here and see how 
how dark that is. And I don't want it to be too dark. I do want to see a little bit of light um, on the edge of his shirt here. So I'll take a small amount of that and see how that works. And that seems to work pretty nicely. And when I do the drawing, I'm always going to focus on the face and draw the face very carefully. Even if I don't draw everything else very carefully, I'm really going to focus on the face because that to me is most of what happens with these figures. Okay, so a little bit of shadow underneath the edge of the shirt. Leave that edge white for the moment. And in here, there's another little light area. And then it gets a bit murky down here. So I can add a little bit of blue to that to give it a bit more life. And as we come down here, just a little bit more of that feeling of dark against the edge of the jacket. And it's a little bit of variation in here too, so we'll lift out a touch of that. And I'm going to leave that um, edge of the shirt white for the moment until I paint the face. So I'm going to move on up to the hat, and then we'll worry about the face. One of the reasons I'm not painting the face first is because I have to compare tones one with the other. And until I get enough colour in, I can't tell how dark the hat needs to be in relation to how dark the face and vice versa. So I'm trying to get as much connection colour in before I start as possible. So this is a very similar colour to the pants that he was wearing. So that would be our um, burnt sienna here. Let me just lift that out as a little bit one there. That would be the burnt sienna again with um, ultramarine blue and just a touch of pink and a touch of pink to give that feeling to the hat that's close that's close enough I think there's a little grey in the hat too, so I still have some grey on the palette. I can add some of that in along the way. But let's see if we can make that hat a little shapely with the brushwork. So I'll we'll put just a feeling of colour across here to start with. And I don't want it to be flat. I want it to be it feel as though it has dimension right away. There isn't a lot of shadow and light in this particular part of the painting. And so I've got to make it up as I go along. So I'm having a bit of grey shadow in there, in there too. Just a little touch of dark at the back there, and a little bit more dark back here. So just a few small touches of different colours there. You probably can't see it too well on the screen. I'll add just a little bit more blue in so you can see that a bit more. And that's the first layer. I'm going to come back with another layer on that afterwards. And so the whites don't matter. And now we're pretty ready to start on um, a bit more detail here. So I need to get the face and hands in, um, in the first layer. And so we can do those right now. I'm going to use the burnt sienna idea for the skin tone because it's a small face and it's mostly in shadow, and so I, I'm okay with that colour. I need to just test that on the paper. It's really dark 
because his most half of his face is in shadow. So I'm going to go with dark. So I need to have that ready to go. I need to have the color ready for any grays that are in the beard. So I'll make up a little more gray here to make that work. So on my palette, I've got the gray, I've got the burnt sienna ready to go. And other tones that I might need, I'm going to add in later. This is the first layer on the skin tone. As you're painting faces, the very first layer that you paint, the lightest tone, should cover everything in the face. Should cover the teeth, should cover the whites of the eyes, everything in the face, because nothing is lighter on the face than the lightest skin tone. Okay, so it's really important that you cover everything when you're doing this. Okay, so he's got a little gray hair. Some of it's lighter, some of it's not so light. Let's put it a little bit back there, just so we know that's happening. He has a little gray coming through his beard. And the area under his nose is gray. I'm just a bit closer on that. So a little gray underneath here, and this helps to define the edge of that shirt that we were looking at before. A little bit under there, that should be brown, take that out. And now I've got to make sure that the skin tone goes through the beard so that that little white area is not bright white, that it's feeling as though it's a whitish beard. And so I need to make sure that works that way. Just a little bit of gray underneath the lip there. And a little bit at the base of the beard. And everything else is white, but white is never, you know, it's, it's a gray beard, so it's not going to be white, white. And now I'll just soften the edges. Just a little bit. Now we're beginning to get something that feels along the lines in that first layer, along the lines of his, his beard. Okay. To run it into that shadow underneath there. And I think it might be a good idea to have a touch of light just at the edge of that. So I'm just going to lift out a little bit of light there that we can focus on a bit more later. Okay. Okay, so I think we're pretty good to go on that. Took out a bit too much color there. Let's chop a little bit of that in. That's better. Okay. Now, when we're painting faces, the noses usually and the ears are going to be warmer. There are three zones on the face. The zone that goes through the bottom of the face here is usually cooler. The zone that goes through the middle of the face here is usually warmer. And the zone that goes through the upper part of the face is kind of neutral. And so you can always add a little bit more color in this area here. And I will be doing that a little bit later on. I've got some shadows to add and other things to add later. But this is just the first layer. So this will be our first basic skin tone there. And now the hands, same idea. I'm going to use the same skin tone. Um, I'm going to do a flat wash and lift out just a little bit on the top for the light. Um, the hands are in light, so I have added a little bit of water to the mix to make it a bit lighter. This area, most of this area, will be shadowed afterwards. But right now we need just a little bit of color on the fingers to make that work. So 
This also pops out the recorder a bit so we can see what's happening there. And I'm going to use that dark color that I used down here just to put in the beginning of this shadow that we'll see in this space. Now you can see that I'm nowhere near um, darks, uh, any darks at the moment. Everything is in a middle tone, pretty much, except for this one little dark that's jumping out. And even that's not dark enough yet. So I'm just going to add a couple more of the darks, and I'll start down here. So let me just add in a couple of shadows in here, first of all. Just using the colors that are on the palette right now, the darker colors that are on the palette. I'm just going to add in a few little suggestions of these, these tones. It's just a bit too blue. Still just a little bit too blue. Let's just take that out. And do it again. Usually um, areas like this are going to be um, folds in fabric in areas like this are going to have a sharp side and a shadow and a soft side. So they'll have a sharp edge and a soft edge. And so that's one of the easiest ways to think about folds. And I'm just suggesting them in here. I'm not going to do it in too much detail. I'll have just a little shadow in there. And just a touch more in here. Some shadow down there. And obviously where he's sitting, it's going to get a little bit more shadow. That we can add in later. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of shadow in here and in this one before we stop for just a little while. The shadow on the um, fabric, it's like a blanket that he has on the ground here. Shadow on the blanket is just a little bit, um, not quite so gray, it's a little bit bluer. So put that in here. Just a few touches of this and then I'll soften down some of these edges. Maybe just a little shadow under here. A bit of shadow under there. We don't need too much information down here. And obviously underneath here is going to be just a bit darker. And under here will be just a little darker afterwards. This is this is good enough for now. We build up the the information as we go. Okay, so we've got a feel for how that's working. Just needs to be softened up on the top edge as well. All right, there's not too much of an issue. Just a little bit darker here on that corner. And coming down under here too. Now, 
we go back to our skin tones, the idea of the different skin tones. If you remember, this one was um, burnt sienna, and this one was made with cadmium red and cadmium yellow, basic skin tones. And those are great for basic first skin tones. And so if I'm doing a portrait like this, then I'm going to use that basic skin tone everywhere, in the eyes, in the teeth, everywhere, all the way down through the portrait. Okay. Then the issue comes with doing shadows. And so where are you going to put the shadows and how are they going to work? And so um, this is where I like to use a little bit of cerulean blue, can you see, in the shadow areas, and a little bit of cobalt blue in some places, and particularly around the bottom of the face here and the bottom of the face here. So this is the cooler area of the face. This is the warmer area of the face, and this is the more neutral area of the face. So when you're painting a face, it's really good to think about that because those, those particular areas um, are very, very different on those faces. And her, her nose could be a little bit warmer, actually, in this particular painting. But So I'm going to use um, a skin tone shadow, and for that I use a couple of different colors. Um, for basic skin tone shadows. So there's lots of different possibilities, lots of different options for skin tones. There isn't just one skin tone. Okay, that's not how it works. Skin tones are, they vary depending upon the light, depending upon the subject, depending upon the location of the, the shadow. And so there really isn't a recipe. So you're going to have to observe what you're seeing in your subject. But one of the shadow mixes that I use is uh, another color that's on my palette that I didn't tell you about is alizarin crimson right here. And I keep it on here specifically for uh, working with portraits. Um, alizarin crimson and burnt sienna together make a very good shadow color. But as you can see, that shadow color is warm. Now, a lot of the shadows that are on a face are warm. Shadows under the nose, shadows in the ears particularly, are going to be warm. So that would work pretty nicely for the shadows in the ears here. But I'm going to continue him with burnt sienna because I started that um, initially. But after I've got those first shadow, first tones in, then the shadows that I need to use, I'm going to use a mixture of alizarin crimson and burnt sienna. And then drop into it maybe a touch of cerulean maybe a touch of cobalt, depending upon what else is in the painting and which colors will work. So I'm thinking about skin tones in relation to the whole painting and not just in relation to the face. Okay, so in this painting, I have a lot of cerulean in the back of the painting. You can see it granulates out. It has a granulating effect. There's a lot of cerulean in the clothing here. And so I'm going to use that same color in the face and in the hair as well to help it to connect all the way through. Where I'm not going to use it is inside any of the dark areas. Let me just tighten that up again. I moved a bit too fast for the camera there. Okay, in any dark areas in the face, in the nostrils, in the ears, in the mouth, all of those little dark areas need to be warm. You can't paint them purple. I made the mistake one time when I was very new to portraiture of thinking I could be clever and paint a whole face in purples. And boy, was it a mistake. So uh, not going back there again. Um, so warm skin tones in the um, darker areas of the face. So this uh, shadow tone works pretty nicely on a basic skin tone like this. I put a little bit of the warm tone on, and then I add in just a touch of cerulean blue while it's still wet, will give me a shadow that's still warm enough, but doesn't read as hot. Can you see that? So it's a good shadow for under the chin. It's a good shadow for under the nose, good shadow for in the eye sockets. And so you can use it a little bit lighter if you want to. And give a slightly lighter feel for that shadow. Okay. So skin tone shadows are particular. 
Okay, they're, they're not like any other shadows. You've got to be careful about the tone of the shadow and how warm or how cool it is. For the shadows that I'm using on a limited palette of raw sienna, permanent rose and ultramarine, that limited palette we talked about. I'm just a little bit more of the raw sienna there so you can see that. Um, then I would use these colors for the shadow. So I'm going to use a touch of ultramarine blue. Let me just clean this up so you can see where I'm going with this. Um, more often than not, for figures as opposed to portraits, um, the burnt sienna is going to be a good choice for you because the faces aren't usually that large and don't need as many shadows. So for my shadow color, I'm going to mix up the skin tone color, right, which is the two, the warm and the cool together, into something that looks along the lines of that color that I made for this shadow, okay? Really good idea to do swatches when you're doing skin tones because then you can check and see how dark your shadow is before you put it on the face. So there's my shadow color. And now I'm going to drop in just a little bit of the um, ultramarine blue. And that's fairly strong, so you've got to add plenty of water to that. So just a touch of that. And that will give me a warm and cool feeling for the shadow. Okay. So when you're using a limited palette, you stay with a limited palette. If you're using skin tones that are made from multiple colors, then you use those colors. And if you're using burnt sienna up here, you can get away with a shadow color that's made with burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And it's going to be a warm or a cool version of that. A little bit more of that warm tone. Okay, and a touch of ultramarine blue just to cool it down. And that's going to give you a, a shadow, a coolish shadow, or a warmer shadow, depending on how much burnt sienna you put in. Warmer still if you need to. And those are pretty good colors for. Um, for skin tone. So on the burnt sienna mix, stay with the burnt sienna because it works better. On the limited palette mix, use these colors to make the shadows. And on multiple color mixes, alizarin crimson and burnt sienna together with a touch of a middle tone blue. And that would be cobalt or cerulean. It would work for that. Okay, so now you've got a little information about that. You'll be well away painting your um, subjects. And yes, it's okay to mix warm and cool colors together. Um, if you mix them together equally, you'll gray, they'll gray each other down. You want to have a little bit more of the warm feel happening in um, for a warm shadow and a little bit more of the cool feel happening for a cooler shadow. Okay, I'm going to start right at the top now this time and work just a touch more on that hat. Let's get a little bit more of that gray tone on my palette. Just making up some grays here, gray brown. And just a tiny touch of pink in there to give it just a little bit more life. There we go. So now for this, we need just a little shadow in here, I think. A little bit more shadow at the back and a touch of shadow at the front. Let me go over so you can see what I'm doing. And a little bit more color back here. And while that's there, I'm going to add a touch of blue to this mix and get a grayish tone for the band that goes across here. I think I made that just a bit too high at the back there. I think it needs to go down just a little bit more back there. Yep, that's 
that's better. And we'll put a little bit of a darker tone as we get to that later. More colour on the front. We'll stop with that for the moment. And I'll tighten up all these little edges at the end. I usually go around at the end of the painting and just tighten up everything that's necessary back there. Just want to touch more colour back there. There we go. All right, now a little bit more browns, and I'm going to work my way down from the face now and put a shadow in. Most of the top half of his face is shadowed, so this will be a, a burnt sienna and a blue shadow exactly what I was talking about and that's going to go in underneath and it's going to come down about halfway down his nose because his hat is shadowing his face quite a bit in there. That's going to go all the way around to the back and it will have a soft edge. A little bit of that shadow will be underneath his nose too and on his top lip. Top lips are usually in shadow. That's another thing actually about painting lips. Um, face, the mouth is the hardest part of the face to paint, um, always. Um, but lips should never be red. Burnt Sienna makes a wonderful colour for lips. I'm just giving him a little crease here on his, on his face, a nice deep crease there with a soft edge so that it comes out just a little bit more. Warm tones underneath the nose, if you can see underneath the nose. Just a little bit more of a warm tone there. The shadow is just a bit too wet for the moment to, to do anything else. And I might need to make that a bit darker, but he has a little bit of a darker skin tone in here. Coming along that edge. And a little shadow behind his ear. And that shadow under here can be a bit darker too. Make his ear a bit warmer with some burnt sienna. Overall, we'll put a little dark shadow in it later. Just make it a little darker and a little stronger. Just a little edge, lift a little edge out there so it has some shape. He has some little bit of a darker tone right underneath his bottom lip. A bit of a mixture of brown and grey. Make a slightly darker mix of this grey now. Burn Sienna and Ultramarine Blue is what I'm using here. We'll give him some grey hair back here. Finish that band off a little bit more. Let's let it go down back into the back. It's just a bit too high before. Okay. I'm going to go back and revisit that shadow that's underneath his, um, his hat. Go just a little bit darker on that. It's dried a bit lighter than I wanted. That's much better. And that same shadow is going to come down the side of his nose too.
little bit of red here on his nose to warm it up a bit. Tiny touch. Could use red or could use burnt sienna. And then I'm just going to lift out a little bit on the side there. Okay. So his beard is jumping out too much. It's too bright. And it's coming out of the picture um, too much. So I need to calm that down just a little bit. A little bit of gray tone. I don't want to lose the white completely, but I just need to lose a little bit of that shape and that. Um, that white tone. Pull that darker tone down a bit more there. Okay, let's put some shadows in here and get serious about how dark these are going to be. And a few little shadows in here. Underneath, and coming down the front. And now we can get really serious about some darks. Um, and somebody's asking if I exaggerate, over exaggerate, or under exaggerate, and that depends on the subject. So, yes, depending upon the subject. Um, I, I try to do what's best for the painting. Okay, so whatever I feel um, is going to make a better choice for the painting. That's what I'm thinking. And get just a little dark in the corner here. And we'll run that up into the edge of the jacket. Now we need a little bit more color on the jacket too. In the shadow, that colour will be more like this. And this is also going to pop out the the um, what was that about being able to paint and talk at the same time? <laughs> Concentrating on this too much. And that's going to pop out his recorder. That's what I was trying to say. Okay, a little bit more shadow um, underneath now. The just darkening the shadows here to something browner. Making a larger puddle, so I've got stuff to work with in here. Just a little bit browner for those shadows, a little bit more of that going down there. And we'll grey down this shirt just to fit more in a few places so it fits down into that space. And just a few suggestions of separation there. A bit of a shadow on the outside edge of this. Okay. Let's try it off now so we can... The uh, eye is going to line up with the outside edge of the nose, depending on whether it's sideways or um, straight. It doesn't matter. It's still going to line up with the outside edge of the nose. And so you want to make sure you get that into the right place. And so that will, that will work pretty nicely for that. We just need a suggestion of his sideways eye there.
and the socket as well. So just putting a suggestion of that. A bit more of a dark tone on the face. And a touch more feeling the dark underneath there. Okay, now we've got his face uh, pretty much finished. We'll just put a little dark in the ear socket there. Now we'll work down to there we go. So what I'm looking for when I'm painting details is light against dark. What is light? What's dark? What's middle tone? That's really all about everything in the painting is what's light and what's dark. It's not really about anything else for me. And so I'm not thinking nose, I'm thinking how dark. I'm not thinking eyes, I'm thinking, well, it's got to be in the right place, but how dark does it need to be to make it read like an eye? And I'm popping things out because of using light against dark. All right, I just need a bit more color here on this, um, in this shadow. Just a little bit more of the white sienna feel. That's better. Just need a slightly warmer shadow here. Leave a nice little light edge on there if we can. And bring that shadow out. Just want to capture that top edge again. I lost that little corner. So I'm just going to bring that back. Tiny details like that are important. Okay, so I'm going to work a little faster now as I come down to, to this area. And because I lifted some of those um, spaces, I don't have to do quite as much work on these areas. I can suggest it and it reads a little better. I'm putting some of these in and I'm going to just go back and soften them. This one needs to be dark right away, so we can put that in right away. Just a little light on the edge there. On this edge, there we go. And a little bit darker against that. So, following the idea of these folds, I'm going to soften some of these off. And if I want to, I could always make another layer of um, color to add in over the top if I felt that I didn't have enough color in the jacket. I think I do, but if I wanted to add a few touches of extra color here, for example, um, and here, perhaps, um, maybe down in the bottom part, maybe on the back. And what I'm looking for is a jacket that's used and worn. A bit more color here, a bit more of a dark brown tone down here more of a shadow underneath here, but more of this feeling of stuff moving around. I'm being a little bit looser on this one because of the time that I was on the one I did before. Just a little bit more colour on there. There we go. 
a touch more colour on the front there to make that happen. And across here, down here. So just about everything we paint is about shapes. Shapes are important. So I'm always thinking about the possibility of what shapes I'm using, what edges I'm finishing with. Are they too sharp? Are they too soft? All of this stuff is important. So that's, that's coming on now. This is the hardest part of the painting in as much as it takes just a little bit more time um, to get this area working. I'm just going to take that back over there and darken this just a little bit more in here because it's mostly in the shadow. That was too dead. I need to put just a bit more colour in there. There we go. Just a bit more shadow down there. A little bit more shadow on this arm at the bottom. And then I'll have to really darken the darks. Um, tiny little touches of much darker paint before I finish these. So in here, for example, much darker. In here. Remember when you paint from photographs though, um, you need to watch that a little bit because photographs tend to lie about the shadows. In fact, they don't tend to, they absolutely do lie about the shadows. And so they always make shadows look a little too dark, darker than they are in reality. If you're painting outside, you'll see that very clearly. You'll see that shadows have more color and more life when they're painted um, from life. That's why plein air paintings usually look a little different from studio paintings painted from a from a um, photograph. Okay, we'll have just a bit more colour down here where it's a little bit lighter, and then we should be good to go on this for a while. A little bit more colour in here. Okay, so I'm going to go with that for his jacket. All these little whites I fill in at the end usually. I don't worry too much about those along the way. I'm going to just fill in while it's on my palette here. Just a little of the grey back here to connect him to that. And they need just another extra tone. Um, this one does eventually, so we'll add that too. Okay, so now I'm going to work on on his. Um, let me just bring that down a little bit more there. Work on his pants and get those. A little bit more space, a little bit more shape. So basically, there's a big couple of big feelings of um, crease going in there, another one here, another one there. Pretty much all of this is in shadow. So we'll take that right down into a shadow to start with. And that will help that to disappear where it belongs. Pretty much all of this is in shadow. So lose that back to where it belongs. And now I'm just going to soften some of these down, these edges, so that they connect just a little better with 
what was there before and in something not quite so dark in a few places. And a little bit of a feeling of movement across the knee there. Okay, some information down here. The shadow coming back there, and the shadow coming under there. Moving right on down, we're going to darken this area. Looked really dark when we first started, but it's nowhere near where it needs to be. Now we're getting there. It's actually the darks that make the painting come to life, always. So as soon as you start to get some really good darks into the painting, it starts to take off and look more interesting. So a little soft edge on that one. And we might need just a couple more dark lines in that top leg. wash those out just a bit too much and that one there everything dries just a little lighter and beautiful as you know okay a few shadows down on the feet now getting very close to the end of this subject i'm just going to finish off the hands and the um and the pipe in a moment. I just want to get a few shadows in here first. Put them in and soften the edge. A bit more colour in the shoes, more of a dark feel in the shoes. And the warm colour still shows through this. But Overall, they need to be just a touch darker. And the socks a little darker still, but we'll come back to that in a minute. The um, bottom part of the shoe, the sole, I'm going to give a little turn to as well. Something light, but not too warm. So it's going to be more like this. There and there'll be some shadows underneath those when we're finished. I'm just going to darken the socks just a little bit. Particularly around the heel on this one and down here just a touch. And just leave a little bit of light on the top of that one. Looks like it'll work, and this one's probably a bit more in the shadow, so I'll give that just a slightly darker tone. Almost the same tone as the shadow, but it'll be a bit lighter when it dries. Okay, so we're getting close here. Just a few more um, suggestions of shadows down here. that feel of shape for the fabric. It's sitting on the ground so everything can be pretty flat. I'm going to use a little gouache for the money that was thrown onto the blanket in a moment. I'm 
just give it a bit more shadow in that one area. Raise it up a bit more. And connect it to this leg a little better here. It's not working right now. So it needs to open up and connect to that. And I'm just using basically what's on the palette for these little connections here. Okay, that's a better connection now. This seems to be um, a little too light now that that shadow's dried. I'm going to put another little shadow in there just to pop up that front of the shoe. And that one's still okay. This needs to be a little darker. And I think we're good to go down there now for a while. Leave that to the way it is. Fabric's looking okay for the moment. And now I'm just going to move up to the hands before I finish off here. Now we need some shadows for the hands. We're using Ben Sienna, so we're going to use Ben Sienna for the shadows. Ben Sienna and a little ultramarine blue. To make a darker tone. Or hands. Look a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. And put that in there while I think about it. Make sure his thumb stays out here because that's part of the playing. And that seemed like a very dark shadow when I first put it on, but look at it now. It's not looking nearly as dark as it needs to be, so I'll come back and darken that in a moment. And the rest of his hands, this one's going to have a little shadow underneath and shadows between the fingers. And this one, the shadow is going to be more along the edge of the knuckles. Here we have the back of the hand. And between the fingers here too. Okay, that's going to work for let that dry down first. And then we'll see if we need to add more colour to that. We need probably just a little bit more long tone on this edge. Pretty much the same tone as the edge of this, so I'm going to darken one of those to make it work. Um, two tones together that are the same don't read very well from a distance, and so that's when I change things in the painting if necessary. Change the tones, make white writing black, or um, change tones that are next to each other to make them work. Okay, this little edge here needs a nice dark shadow now. It's a better shape too. And that should work pretty nicely. Okay. Just a tiny little bit more shadow in the, in the inside of the hand there. Okay, let's take a look at that from a distance. A little bit further out. There we go. Okay, now when I look at his face, I see that his moustache needs to be darker, right up under here, right up under the nose. Everything dries just a little bit lighter, so in watercolour you have to come back quite often and just revisit some of those areas that are not quite dark enough. And the top lip is always darker because it's in shadow than the bottom lip. Bottom lip's just a little light on that too, so I'll give it just a bit more tone. There we go. 
bit closer so you can see that. There we go. A little bit more colour in his in his neck here. Give him more life along there. I need to tidy up the hat just a little bit. I'm going to give this a dark, slightly darker rim along here. Straighten up the back of the head just a bit more. And now we're good to go on that. That should be all right. And this rim comes down just a little bit more into the back there. Okay, so that's looking good. This is a little sharp here, so I'm going to soften that edge down. It's not bleeding as a fold very well. It's just a little bit too linear. It needs to be softer. And this one can go back and be a little darker. I have a few more of these coming around here. Right, darker tone now on the black area. Just waiting for the hands to dry down just a little bit before I go back in and work on. Work on that. Um, record. Just a little bit of darker through here to um, connect all of those things together and everything too. Just a bit more dark. I'm going to darken this post just a wee bit behind him. The other posts don't really need it quite so much. It's more about him and where he is and what he's doing. So and I could make it a little dimensional, but I'm not going to worry about that today. That could always be done later. Straight lines are not my forte, I have to say. Right, let's go back out and look at the big picture again and see what jumps out and says, fix me. Okay, so the front of his um, jacket here could use a little sharper edge, so we'll make that happen. This looks okay, this looks okay. This needs a little bit of sh shadow or shape in this area here. We're not quite sure what's happening there, so we'll... There's a pocket in here that's not very evident. And a couple more shadows on the side should do it. A bit more wrinkling feel in here should help that a bit. Okay, so that's pretty good. That needs to be toned down. That edge needs to connect with the jacket just a little better and that's too wet. That's better. Okay, so his face is working, the white beard is jumping out just a little bit too much here. We'll give it just a touch more. The eye could be a tiny touch darker. Really, we're just seeing a little triangle is what you're going to see from that distance. And so that's going to work for that. How do the feet look? Feet's looking okay for, for this one. The shadows, for some reason, aren't getting dark enough there. So I need to darken those a bit more. It's just a little dark shadow under there. And um, I, do, I don't use black. I make black with ultramarine blue and 
burnt sienna whenever I need it. So this is more like a blackish tone. Um, I do use sepia sometimes, but mostly for a sepia painting, not so much. Um, sepia is a little opaque. Um, I do use occasionally um, neutral tone for the darks, and that has black in it, but not very often. It depends on the subject. So I use neutral tone in the Pappadelle um, because I had a lot of large dark areas to cover, and that was a good way to do that. Okay, so we're getting a little bit more shape in the, in the foot here. And that's working better. That shape is working okay right now. But we need just a bit more shadow on the side here still. Just a tiny bit more shadow to give the, the foot a bit more shape. And this one needs just a little bit more shadow. Okay. All right, now I'm going to use a little gouache to um, white wash to make up some colors for the money that's sitting on the counter. I'll use white, pure white for one of them, and then pure white mixed with burnt sienna for the copper color. So those two colors. And this is some um, gouache is a good medium for things like this. And then we'll put some shadows underneath these afterwards. Darker colors dry lighter in gouache, lighter colors dry darker in gouache. So you have to get used to how gouache works. Mm -hmm. Could go back and darken some of the areas behind, but I don't really need to do that. I'll put a whole bunch of this down here. And then we'll just come back and put some shadows underneath those afterwards when they're dry. In the meantime, I'm just going to put a little bit of texture on the ground. We'll finish off just the edge of this um, blanket first, and then I'll just add a little texture on the ground here. Let's just finish this off and give it a, a shadow on that edge and a little shadow underneath and the whole area will need just a little bit of shadow on the ground too when we get to, to that in a moment. Okay, so it's looking like he's busy playing. Let's see if we can finish off his hands now. A little bit more colour on the hands and on the... I need to find a space in my palette here. There we go. So we need a little bit more feeling of skin tone colour here just on this part, on the back part. And I'll run that down into the shadow too. And the tops of his hands are going to be just a little bit lighter. And so these don't really need too much more colour. I'm going to use the gold to tighten up the bottom edge of the Recorder. We'll give it a little shadow 
it can have a tiny touch of raw sienna all the way through, or quinacridone gold, it doesn't matter. Raw sienna is probably better than this. It's a sort of cream colour. So I'll just put a little raw sienna along here and soften the edge. Hmm, too much water. My sponge is getting a little soaked here. Keep that top edge fairly light and a little bit more colour on the sun. And technically, there's a, there's a shadow, let's put a tiny bit more colour on the bottom there. There is a shadow underneath the, the fingers, but I can't put that in until this is dry. Now, with a subject like this, it's light, and I can't see the light on top. Um, I've got an issue with having this edge to, to much the same tone. So I'm going to go back in with some of the color that I used for the water, which was a little cerulean, a little cobalt, and a little tiny touch of burnt sienna to gray it down a bit. I'm just going to use a little bit of that and just test the colour and see how it's, it's close. Yes, it's close. I'm going to use a little of that on the top of this, pull it back, and lose it back into the water because I need this instrument to pop out just a little bit more. And those colours are exactly the same, so I'm just going to lose that back into the background. Make the water just a little bit darker in that spot. And that helps to, to pop that out. And that will dry down and hardly be noticeable there. Take it up just a little higher and soften the edge. Just vary it a little way across there. There we go. And then these um, Lines can be painted just a wee bit darker afterwards. Okay, so we need to make his shadow a little bit warmer, a little bit darker on his hand. Over here. And that will help that. And a little warmer in here too. And that will help that. His face you can have just a touch more of that warm too. Everything seems to be washing up today. There we go. We'll pull his eye back just a tiny touch. So we see the shadow around his eye just a bit more. Okay, I think we are almost ready to finish. Now, I can finish off this edge a little bit later, catch up those edges. But what I was going to do down the bottom here was just to add in a textured area. So you can, and then some shadows. So if you want to watch that, um, this will be the, the last thing that I'll do here, apart from the, the monies. I'm just covering up the painting where I don't want the spatter to go, because spatter will go everywhere. 
and we're going to use whatever's on the palette. And so whichever colours are on the palette, I'm going to spatter away here to give this foreground some texture. Grays and browns and blues and whatever you've got will make this work. And I'm going to dry this down very quickly with the hairdryer. And then I'm going to come back in and put a shadow in this over a lot of this base area. And that connects the figure to the ground. We don't want the figure to feel as though it's floating. And it will do if I don't add some shadows in there. Okay, so that should be enough splatter. And now I'm going to use a grey shadow on the ground. Ultramarine blue and burn sienna again, that good shadow colour. It works really well for just about everything. That's mm -hmm. good. I'll go just a little lighter on that. That should cut nicely. And now I'm going to just run some shadows across here. to connect him up to the ground area. Definitely shadows below the feet here. And just a little suggestion of shadow in other places too. It shouldn't be looking too pristine down there. So because I painted the background in um, first, I have a few little edges here that need to be connected and that could happen. And um, we'll just check his hands again, and make sure we've got enough colour on those. And we're going to need just a little bit more shadow on the fingers. And then I think we'll be good to go between the fingers here. Just a tiny little bit more of that feeling of shadow there. Get rid of a few little poppy whites there. And there are a few more things that I could do to finish him off, but fundamentally he's just about ready to go. So I'm going to darken this edge a little bit. And the shadow down there. To separate those arms out. And just a little bit more dark in here just to separate that area out too. So just a few more touches to to finish that off, just to sharpen that edge down there. But fundamentally, I said what I wanted to say about him, and just a little tiny bit of dimensions. I'm going to make it just a little darker on this side. Just a tiny little bit of dimension on that. Space there, continue it down there. So this is the important part. This is the part that isn't as important. Although I probably would go over those again with just a touch more colour. Um, just to make them a little bit more evident. And some darks underneath the... Line down here, little shadows underneath that will pop it up out of the blanket just a little bit more. Okay, 
So I think we're just about good to go then. I'm not sure if this is going to be able to do this one. Let's just take a look and see. Yeah, so you can get a feel for how he would look. And I hope you enjoyed that demo. I hope it taught you a lot and that you use some of that information in your own paintings. Um, he's looking nice and comfy and um, focused. And so I think we're good to go on that one. Okay, let me take a look um, and see if see if there are any more questions that I need to answer. Oh, good. Okay. Well, you're very welcome. Yes, I fixed the shadow on his front hand and the jacket sleeve. Yes. We did that. Thank you, Dale. Usually I get to those little details in the end. Um, details and shadows, I'm using either... Um, they're both synthetic brushes. Okay, one comes from Rosemary Company and one is a Le Cornell. Um, so synthetic brushes work uh, pretty nicely. And I'm looking to see if you have any other questions that I can answer. And if you don't, then I think we are good to go today. Yep, I think we're good to go. So, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for coming to the studio. I uh, hope you enjoyed the demo, and I would have hoped to see you soon.